Okay, so now let's see how pH can affect solubility. Um, so it really depends on um, what your products are. So if you have something like magnesium hydroxide, it's associating into ions. Now you're going to have some free magnesium ions and some hydroxide ions. You're going to see under acidic conditions, let's just consider acidic conditions. Acidic means you have what? You have a whole bunch of H plus floating around. So you want to see will one of these products um, interact with some of this H plus that's floating around. And so if you had something like this, you could say, sure, this hydroxide, all right, OH, can react with H plus, and I'll make some water. And water is a liquid um, that's going to be very stable. Now, things that are not going to hang around, it, water will hang around for a while, right? If you made a strong acid here, then strong acids want to dissociate. They would rather be ions. So if you're going to make water, if you're going to make um, a weak acid, uh, then we would say that the reaction is more, or the uh, solid is more soluble under acidic conditions. So under acidic conditions, we have magnesium hydroxide. It's going to dissociate into magnesium and hydroxide ions. And then this hydroxide ion is going to get, um, uh, it's going to start interacting with the H+. And so this concentration will decrease, which will force the reaction in that forward direction. So you, if you remove a product, Remember Le Chatelier's principle, if you remove the product, it's going to shift the reaction to the right. So if you remove the product, you're going to shift the reaction to the right, making it more soluble. Shift to, you want to replace those products, and this will make it more soluble. So magnesium hydroxide under acidic conditions will become more soluble. Let's see about um, PBF2. So the, look at the anion and see if it's going to react with H+. So if I had F- minus and H+, plus, I'll make some HF. Yeah, that's a weak acid. Which means that as soon as I have a whole bunch of H+, plus, it's going to interact with this F-, minus, which means F- minus is not going to be in my equilibrium. I'm not going to have, I won't be in equilibrium anymore. More of this will have to dissociate into ions in order to replace the F- minus ions that are being picked up by the H+. Plus. And so this will drive the reaction in the forward direction. So this one's also going to be more soluble under acidic conditions. Let's try a couple more. So here's another problem. Same thing, um, let's see, nickel, so but it's, it's the same thing, but now we have to actually write the reaction out. So uh, this nickel hydroxide, nickel 2 plus, and 2 OH minus. So whenever you see this OH minus, think OH minus plus H plus, sure, that's going to make water, and water's going to hang around. So if you make water, you make a weak acid, that's going to stay. Uh, so this is going to be more soluble under acidic conditions. Um, calcium carbonate. Start off just by writing the reactions, CO3, 2 minus, and then look at the anion, the negative one, and see what happens when you react that with, with water. I'm sorry, with um, H+. And so when you do that, you're going to get you know, H2, CO3, and that is a weak acid. So that'll be more soluble as well. So it would rather look like this. So what, all again, all we're doing here is looking at the anion, those products. And we're saying if I remove a product, I'm going to shift towards the products, which makes this solid more soluble. So if I remove a product, I shift towards the products. So the way I'm removing these products is by adding something that will react with it. I'm going to add H plus 2, and it's going to shift it in that direction. Let's try barium fluoride. So that's going to dissociate into barium ions and fluoride ion. So I look at that fluoride ion and I say, will that react with H plus? Yes, it will. I make HF, which is another weak acid. Weak acids are going to stay around. So BAF2 is more soluble under acidic conditions. Silver chloride. I get silver and chloride ions. So I look at the chloride ions, and I say what happens when that reacts with H+, plus? I make HCl, oh, what do you know about HCl? That's a strong acid, which means the equilibrium doesn't lie in that direction, it actually goes in that direction. So chloride ions, if they find H+, plus, they would rather just be apart. 
So this one will not be more soluble under acidic conditions because you made a strong acid. But if you make water or you make a weak acid, then you're going to be fine. So these are all examples of how changing the pH can affect solubility. So we're just looking at under acidic conditions what can happen. Well then you have this H plus floating around, it's going to interact with one of your anions, it's going to drive the reaction in the forward direction making this guy more soluble. Um, you can do something similar with um, other ions as well, or other ligands. And, and what you're basically doing is you're forming something called a complex ion. So complex ions look like these guys. This is the well, yeah, right here. They have a metal and then they have some kind of ligand. A ligand is just like a Lewis base, so you may remember that from the end of chapter 16. Um, Lewis bases are, they usually have a lot of extra electrons that they're going to donate. Um, and so you have a metal cation, which is positive, and then you have these other things that are kind of donate their, donating their electrons. Um, the process here this is a formation reaction. You're, you're forming these complex ions. So the equilibrium constant you're looking at is called a Kf. And the Kfs are huge. This is time, we get 1 times 10 to the positive 25. We haven't seen anything this big so far. These are really, um, really big equilibrium constants, which means it goes all the way to the right. Uh, as soon as those two ions find each other, as soon as the ligand finds the um, metal, it's going to want to form this complex. And so what we're going to do now is look at what happens when you have some free silver ions or any of these ions in your solution. If you add something to it that can pull it out of the solution, it will drive it in the forward direction. So this is another way to make things more soluble. Take solids that are not necessarily very soluble and increase their solubility. So let me give you an example. So if we had something like silver chloride. Silver chloride is a solid and it's we can dissociate into silver ions and chloride ions. Um, KSP for this guy, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10, which is pretty small. It's not very soluble. Um, now, if I could, so I could, you know, changing the pH on this one didn't really help, right? Because the H plus and the Cl minus are not going to get together because that would form a strong acid. Strong acids would rather be by themselves. So you can't just change the pH and, and hope that this guy will get more soluble. You want to work on this ion. So if I can remove the silver ion from the solution, I can shift the reaction in the forward direction. Right? If I remove a product, I need to replace those products in order to reach equilibrium. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on that silver ion. Okay, so we're going to focus on this guy. So if you go up to this table, you can see there's a lot of things you can add to silver that will form a complex ion. Any of these ligands here, it's great. There's more. This is a really small version of this table. You can find this in the back of the book. But these are the you know, three that we can work on. Let's just look at that first one adding some ammonia. So if I had silver ions and then suppose in my solution I also had um, some of the ammonium ions, or sorry, ammonia ions, I can form this complex ion. And the ions are put in brackets and they show their charge like that on the outside. This has a Kf, a formation constant that's huge. 1.7 times 10 to the 7, to the positive 7, positive 7. So what I'm doing is I'm pairing a reaction that has a pretty small, um, pretty low KSP, like a, a small equilibrium constant with one that has a big equilibrium constant. If I added those two reactions together, remember what happens when you add reactions, you multiply their Ks? It's from chapter 15, that was a long time ago. Um, when I add these up, right, I get my silver chloride, add everything on the left and then everything on the right and then we'll see how that affects the equilibrium constant at the end. We've got a new equilibrium constant because now you're, you're just combining two different types of reactions. Alright, so I cross out my silver and that's my final reaction. To get my new K, the K that represents that reaction, here I can just erase these guys instead of rewriting it all. There we go, that's the reaction. The K is going to be, I'll just call it it's called K. <laughs> KC. Uh, just multiply those. The KSP, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10, and the KF, which is 1.7 times 10 to the positive 7. When you work that out, you get a new K. 3.1 times 10 to the negative 3. And there's no units on your K. So you can see you took this really small K, which was times 10 to the negative 10, paired it with something that was really big, and now all of a sudden uh, more of this solid silver chloride will, dis will um, dissolve because 
you're, you have another reaction here that you're combining it with. So in order to make things more soluble, you kind of work on the, the ions over here. If you move, remove the ion, whether you're doing it by changing the pH or by adding something that can form a complex ion, then you can increase the solubility of a slightly soluble salt.